I, we saw you, we witnessed you doing a battery of tests on two adults and two children. Did you find that the people who were exposed and affected by the hydrogen sulfide, did you find that they knew something was wrong and did you find that they had an idea why something was wrong? Did they know it was the hydrogen sulfide that was the culprit? People are very smart. They generally, intuitively, say, I'm exposed to this, this is happening. They make a connection. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes they're wrong, and sometimes there isn't a connection. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, but rarely, they put it together wrong. Mm -hmm. But one of the f satisfactions I have is sorting this all out. Of course. Using the objective testing and say, well, you know, you're feeling all these ways mm -hmm. that aren't quite right, mm -hmm. but the objective testing says your vision is working, oh. your balance is working, your hearing is working, mm -hmm. your ability to draw conclusions, mm -hmm. to think, to solve problems, mm -hmm. your vocabulary is intact, <laughs> you can recall things that you've right. just heard 30 minutes later. Right. So you're okay. You're pretty much fine. Yeah. But these five pe or four people today had defects in all those areas, mm. particularly the most affected, which turns out to be the 15-year-old daughter mm -hmm. in the one family. So doctor, tell us about Rachel. She's the 15-year-old patient that you saw this morning. What are her symptoms and what brought her in to see you? Well, she is having to be homeschooled because the input on her nervous system at school from the noise, the fluorescent lighting, and uh, the, I guess, confusion really is the way of putting mm -hmm. it. She can't cope with it. Wow. She has to be in a quiet, subdued environment. Now, we were testing her in her fluorescent lights, so I asked her about that. And she said, no, they're not as bright as at school. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is frequent. It's sensory overload. Mm -hmm. I and mean, a lot you... of people complain about sensory overload and mm -hmm. it's kafui, but she has it, I'm quite wow. sure. And are you sure that it's the effect of hydrogen sulfide poisoning? One's never sure, but, uh, you know, with Fairly reasonable confident? <laughs> uh, certainty. Okay. 95% probably mm -hmm. in this case. And so she's a patient with typical symptoms, would you say? Well, typical impairments, typical symptoms. She has 17 by test abnormalities. Mm -hmm. Her balance is abnormal, meaning she sways more than she should. Mm -hmm. Ordinarily, you can stand and you sway a little bit. Mm -hmm. We're all pendulums or you know, bushes in the wind. Of course. But um, it's a degree. Mm -hmm. And we've taken the Romberg test, which is the classic stand with your feet together, how long can you stand? Past a minute you pass, crude test, mm -hmm. 1850 vintage. Mm -hmm. If you use a sound emitter and track the sound, like the hunt for Red October, you then are using modern technology mm -hmm. and you can get very discreet measurements. Mm -hmm. Her measurements are past the point of need, highly discriminatory. Um, uh -huh. But, you know, she does visibly sway as you're okay. watching her. And okay, so that's one of her walk symptoms. With her eyes closed oh. is difficult. So that's one of her symptoms balance. What are the other 16 symptoms? Well, symptoms are what people complain of. Mm -hmm. Impairments are Impairments, what we yes. measure. Yes, yes. And they have some overlap, but, you know, there are many symptoms like pain. There's no measurement objective of pain, measurement. Yeah, yeah. And there are things like, uh, oh, let's say cognitive dysfunction, inability mm -hmm. to calculate in your head or mm -hmm. to solve problems mm -hmm. that people often are unaware because they never do those things. Mm -hmm. They don't know what right, their capacity right, right. is. So we put them through the paces. That's why they get so worn out. And ah. after four hours, you know, they weren't ready to go do something else. And both... Rachel and her mother doing the vision test where you have to identify where 80 spots of light are coming from with what mm -hmm. intensity. You know, it's a threshold mm -hmm. vision test. They both got rather severe headaches when they're doing this. Oh, wow. Which is just... And that's consistent with hydrogen sulfide 
toxicity. Yeah, it's one of the things we okay. see very frequently. The inability to remember. Mm -hmm. Both of them had almost no ability to remember. We have a, a short story that has about 28 or 30 parts, mm -hmm. and they would remember five or six. You know, you and I would remember 25, and mm -hmm. 30 minutes later would remember 24. Mm -hmm. Anything you'd encoded, you at least kept in that soft part of memory for yeah. uh, 30 minutes, but they would lose it down to zero. I can't imagine how debilitating it must be in everyday life for them to get along with such severe well, impairments. The, you get used to it, I suppose, is the way mm -hmm. you cope with it. Yeah. But yes, I mean, I mean, for a fifteen-year-old kid to not be able your, to go to school, that's pretty tough. Yeah, and you know, she weighs two hundred nineteen pounds on a five foot four inch frame ah. now. And do you think that's related to this oh, hydrogen yes. sulfide? How? Well, two ways. One is that probably the only entertainment she gets is eating, mm. and our satisfaction, yeah. whatever you want to call you know, feeling good about things. Mm. And the other is that many chemically exposed people without any um, awareness just gain weight. And they've calculated and kept food diaries. And they don't seem to be eating all that much. Really? Now, you know, it doesn't make sense. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't yeah. gain weight without eating. Right. But Maybe there is a different economics of, uh, uh, you know, food uh, Well, of course, retention. if your organs are toxic, like your liver, your metabolism can't be that great because it can't process everything else that it, you're putting in, I suppose. There's something that suggests yeah. that there is a metabolic defect. Some people are actually clinically hypothyroid. Oh, I can imagine that it can it depress and, the you know, thyroid. That would and in women especially, if your liver is not working correctly because of toxins, it's not processing estrogen correctly, and that impairs the thyroid. I know all about that. <laughs> and, well, and estrogens also, yeah. you know, all those other things about storage of fat and so forth. Mm -hmm. And does hydrogen sulfide affect estrogen? Hormonal balance in general? It appears to be a disruptor, mm -hmm. although how the mechanism goes, we don't really know. You no, know, hydrogen sulfide's mechanism is so clear. The sulfide combines with iron. Mm -hmm. It takes ferrous iron and makes a sulfide, an insoluble mm -hmm. form. Mm -hmm. So the iron in cytochrome enzymes mm -hmm. needed for energy is bound. Mm -hmm. So you can't... So hence the fatigue. Well, you can't um, access energy. Energy, right. Hence the fatigue. Yeah. And those same mitochondrial enzymes mm -hmm. are the enzymes in the neurosynapse. Mm -hmm. So you don't transmit across the electrical chemical interface right. as right. avidly as you should. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, this is where we start with hydrogen sulfide. I mean, this is a hundred year, 150 yeah. year old information. Yeah. So it isn't as if we got a new chemical to deal with. Mm -hmm. It's, it's an old chemical that was first observed to kill people when they enclosed the sewers in Paris mm -hmm. and London. Mm. You know, when they were trying to get rid of cholera and, right, right, right. and sepsis and so forth, they put covers on the sewers and, and the sewer workers were all being hauled out dead. Oh, wow. And sulfide was produced by human manure. Mm -hmm. It's hard to imagine how really debilitating and handicapping it, it can be. Incredible. It is. Yeah.